Divine Truth Paget Messages Discussions Discussions of individual messages received by James Paget between 1914 and 1923 from large variety of spirits. This is Session 3, Part 3 of the discussion How Divine Love Enters the Human Soul, where Jesus and Mary continue discussing how divine love enters the human soul and the three parts of the human by focusing on the next message from Jesus on the subject, given to James Paget on the 8th of May 1916. This session was recorded on the 25th of July 2017 from 11.30 a.m. in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Great. Do you want to <laughs> continue? We we're halfway through. We're halfway Almost through. halfway through yeah. our message now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's have a look at the next paragraph. It says, The Holy Spirit never performs this work of preparing the soul for the reception of this love. It merely brings the love and causes its inflowing when the soul is in the condition to receive it. In answer to prayer, there are other instrumentalities of the Father working to prepare the soul condition that is required. And these instrumentalities are the bright spirits of the celestial heavens, whose duties, among others, are to answer the prayers of the penitent in the way of infilling the soul with influences that turn the thoughts and aspirations to this divine love and its operations. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now, in the first part again, you're reiterating that, that the Holy Spirit can't prepare the soul Mm. to receive the love. That's something obviously on our part, which we've discussed at length now. Yeah, and I feel a lot of people still think the Holy Spirit can. Um, mm. And and you hear a lot about it when you hear about new age people talking about this and how the Holy Spirit had changed me and things like mm -hmm. that. No, the Holy Spirit doesn't change you. It doesn't prepare you even for change. It only causes the info of love. Now, the, once the love inflows, it can change you, certainly. The love changes you. The love can change you, but yep. again, it has to be, as we've already mentioned, your desire to work in harmony with the love. Mm -hmm. So the love itself enters you, mm -hmm. but but if you change, well, that a lot does, does a lot depend upon other operations as well, mm -hmm. uh, which includes the operation of your desire, your will. Yeah. But but you we're basically saying about the love, aren't we, is that it's such a strong substance that it requires a lot of effort to act against it. It does require a lot of effort. But see, on earth, we're often in a lot of effort to mm. act against it because of our heavy addictions. We're in usually our addictions are a frenzy almost mm -hmm. of addiction. And so there is a lot of effort that we're engaging in our addictions usually. And so. So while we say it's a lot of effort to act against the love, the reality is most people don't see it as effort. Mm. They, in fact, see it as quite the opposite. Mm -hmm. They see it as their frenzies, their addictions impelling them mm -hmm. to act against the love. Mm. And often they value their addictions much more than they value love. And so they act more in harmony with their addictions than ha acting in harmony with love. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, okay. Yeah. But basically, the soul has to be prepared to receive love. The Holy Spirit's not going to do it. But now you introduce another really important thing, mm -hmm. that there are instrumentalities, again, we just call it instruments, mm -hmm. of God mm -hmm. working to prepare the soul. So we've, we've established, look, I've got to do some things. I've mm -hmm. got to create a condition. Mm -hmm for the love to enter me. But what causes me to, to want, want to change, to change my condition? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's really interesting. It's also another demonstration of how much God loves us, the fact that there yes. are instrumentalities. Yes. It's also important to note that I've only mentioned one of the instrumentalities well, here. I'd like to, yes. I, could you, you please? Know, obviously, I haven't mentioned them all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Could you please describe to us uh, some of the instrumentalities? All right. Well, let's yeah. look at the one I first mentioned, which yep. is our celestial spirit friends. Our celestial spirit friends are in a state where they know through personal experience that the love of God exists and can transform us into a new creature. Mm -hmm. So they no longer really have faith in it. 
to them is a fact. It's no longer just faith or a desire, but rather a fact. Mm-hmm. So, so now these celestial spirits are, have this fact um, that's a part of their being. They want to share this fact with people on earth, obviously, and people in the spirit world. So, so they become an instrumentality of the Father mm-hmm. in the sense that they become an instrument by which God can help other people become aware that the love exists and and you need to have some kind of thing happen in your soul before you'll receive it yeah and help the persons become aware of what those things are Mm -hmm. now this is a very important fact actually for the only person in history who hasn't had that happen to them is myself Mm -hmm. but every other person who's ever received love from this earth Mm -hmm. has always had the instrumentality of the father of the spirits helping them to do so. So just to clarify your last point, you're the only person who's lived on earth who has not received assistance from celestial spirits in in the effort to obtain God's love. Yes. Someone who has received God's love, you're the only person who didn't have the help from celestial spirits. No, obviously yeah. I had help from God. Yeah. And there has to be different help yeah. that I had. <laughs> yeah. But not the help of, you know, this is an additional help that, I, that I've not experienced personally, but mm-hmm. that others have experienced. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? And when I say I've not experienced it personally, I didn't experience it personally in the first century existence. Yep. But I do experience it now. Yeah. Because I do get some assistance and help from my celestial friends now. Yeah. So, so the beauty of the whole process is, is that the pe- people, the spirits who have received God's love to the point of one and this also includes the people on earth who have received God's love to that point. Mm-hmm. And the people on earth who have received any of God's love, in fact, all become potential instruments yeah. via which other people can receive not, not God's love, but receive the help required to get in the proper condition to receive God's And love. so is that what you mean? What do you mean by the infilling of the soul with influences that cha- that turn our thoughts and aspirations to divine love? So well, as you know, what's an example? And as we've talked about many times with groups of people about how the soul operates, the soul is a, is a feeling being, right? A mm. thinking, feeling being. It, is, it has all sorts of influences upon it. Many times, unfortunately, due to our surroundings, our, the influences upon it are quite dark. And these can include people with unloving intentions, unloving thoughts, people who just want their addictions met and so forth. These are negative influences that occur upon our soul. But God is not, you know, it'd be terrible if God just left us to all the negative influences and had no positive influences on our soul. Mm-hmm. So, so the reality is that God also allows spirits of a brighter condition to influence our soul as much as a spirit in a negative condition and influence our soul dependent upon to what we're attuned to. Mm-hmm. So, so if we're attuned to a person meeting addictions, then that person who meets our addictions is going to have the most influence on our mm-hmm. soul. But if we're attuned to other things like ethics and morality and principles and things like that, now higher spirits who are also attuned to those particular influences can also now influence mm-hmm. our soul and cause us to have thoughts and feelings that, or, or at least trigger the thoughts that cause feelings yeah. inside of us to want to receive God's love in the first place, develop a desire, develop a desire to be sincere, develop this condition harmonious to, you know, work out, oh, wow, this is how I feel about love. Mm-hmm. Work out the conditions, work through the conditions that are that are anti-receiving God's love so that they can now become harmonious to receiving God's love. Mm-hmm. So, so this is a great way that people around us can influence us in, in this regard. But, but, and that prepares our soul. Okay. Through the influence, we then become prepared. Okay. Um, but this, just like backtracking a mm-hmm. little in, in the context of what you just said, you said they can only influence people who uh, want that kind of influence, who are open to that kind of influence. And is this why you mentioned here in the message that they're, they're the answer to the prayers of the penitent? Yes. And I'm kicking myself for not like getting the de- dictionary definition of penitent. Well, it's the same definition as repentant. Yes. A person who's sincerely sorry for actions 
that they've taken that they realise now are, are and always probably have realised in mm -hmm. many cases are out of harmony with love. Mm -hmm. And a person who's penitent or repentant um, will have an attitude that oh they want to change they want they want change and this is a, as we talked about in the previous paragraph we were talking about. Mm -hmm. This is a part of the conditions of lodgement yes. of the love, wanting change that the love will bring. So, you know, that that's a very important part of getting the state of, of getting the state. Now, now the Holy Spirit and the love doesn't force penitence, doesn't force repentance. No, and we need to talk more about some of the other influences that create a penitent state because there's actually things that come before us getting into a penitent state that are also instruments Influences. of God. Correct. Yes. But let me just finish on that point mm -hmm. before we do that. Um, so these bright spirits of the celestial heavens, they... And we call them bright because they are in a pure state of love yep. from God's perspective. Yep. 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 Um, the, of the celestial heavens whose duties, among others, to are to answer the prayers of the penitent in the way of infilling the soul with influences that turn the thoughts and aspirations to this love and its operations. Hmm. So let's just break that down. They answer prayers of the penitent. So is this, uh, am I to take from that, that I could be praying for just to refine myself rather than praying for love? Um, it could be a sincere prayer and that would bring a celestial spirit to me. Or is that, are we getting finickety about the term prayer? Should I just say the desires of the penitent? Do you understand what I'm well, asking? Well, the desires of the penitent have to be focused towards God in order for the, you know, for God's love to be received, obviously. Yes. But, but sometimes a person who is sorry for their behaviour, even if it's not focused towards God, but it's focused towards their brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. Sometimes they can be influenced to consider God in that process, mm -hmm. right? So a celestial spirit will do whatever they can in answer to God's direction that they do, yeah. right? Because because the prayer is directed at God, but the celestial spirit can feel what prayers are can, directed at God, mm -hmm. and can also feel from God what God how God wants that them to respond. Them to respond. Yep. And so they respond in such a manner to try to assist the person to move from penitence mm -hmm. into desire for a relationship. Yeah. And, and, but, but often it is a person who is repentant that is prepared to move from the, those, from the condition of completely being blocked to God yep. to being open to the potential that God exists. Okay. Yes, I see that. And, um, and but there's fact, more to this question, yes. And in fact, with a penitent person, frequently the penitence is triggered by the fact that there is a higher power or a higher uh, morality involved with regard to their actions other than just sort of the dog-eat-dog, -dog, you know, evolutionary yep. concepts that would yep. normally drive our behaviour. So you're saying they already have a feeling of that? In order to, for them to be penitent. Well, they might not already have a feeling of that, but in order to become penitent, a feeling of that develops in order to become penitent. So, so you must believe at some point that there is a higher morality about what you've done in order for you to see the error of what you've done. Yes. Uh, otherwise, you would just believe, no, evolutionary concept says the uh, might is right, that the survival of the fittest, right? Yeah. And, and this evolutionary concept drives my behaviour. In other words, for most people, what that really means is, unfortunately, it doesn't even mean survival of the fittest. It means for most people, survival of the person who listens to every fear. Yeah, <laughs> you know, that's yeah, usually yeah. what it really means to the yeah. person. And so there is a deep justification in humanity presently that you're allowed to do anything, including murder children you know, through abortion and other things, murder other people through wars and so forth, you're allowed to do all sorts of things because you're afraid mm -hmm. and it's reasonable mm -hmm. to do it because you're afraid. Mm -hmm. Now, a penitent person no longer feels that their unloving actions are reasonable. Why don't they mm -hmm. feel? Mm -hmm. 
there's obviously something going on inside of them that causes them to think they're no longer reasonable mm -hmm. and that there's some other higher morality yes that I should govern that. their behavior yes yes and once they feel that there's some higher morality that should govern their behavior and they desire to engage that higher morality mm -hmm. now a celestial spirit or a spirit of higher development can connect to them and try to influence them and in how to engage that rather than just them responding to the normal condition of humanity yeah mm. so you've said that any sincere prayer results in the reception of god's love why then when i pray uh, no, no, no i've said any sincere prayer for god's love results okay, in the reception of god's was, love that's really what i asked you in the previous question yeah. i was saying you know is this is this a, just a prayer to refine my moral condition so it's not necessarily for god's love yes and, it, and uh, so not only moral condition but also ethical condition and let's dif differentiate moral condition being god's definition of what is moral or a higher source of what is moral mm -hmm. ethical being what is equal for you and me that's more of the ethics side of things yeah and a person who's focused towards ethics and morality and particularly towards morality is more open to the fact there is a higher morality yeah and therefore, and also now that they have this desire to be sorry for what they see as the lower moral position they pro previously took, mm. now they're in a condition where they can be influenced by higher spirits yep. who can now influence them to consider that perhaps God exists and God has love to give them and a number of other influences can occur. Yes. I just, I suppose I wanted to tease out the point that we can pray and it can be sincere, but not yet receive God's love. Well, yes, if we don't pray for God's love, yeah. obviously we're not going to receive God's love specifically, yeah. but we yeah. may pray for many things. Yes, We can pray for truth and yeah. receive it. We can pray for a different concept of moral yes. and receive it. Yeah. We can pray to be forgiven and receive it. Yes. So these are all things that we can pray for which yeah. obviously make us more open yeah. to the reception of God's love as well. Yes, yeah. yes. Okay, now that's clear. Mm. And this, these influences that celestial spirits might have upon me, I just thought it was worth giving some concrete examples. It's all a bit airy-fairy, you know, like they'll come and influence me. What does that really mean? Well, they're completely capable of influencing your thoughts. So I might have a new thought of like... You might go, oh... Gee, Maybe I've, I should do that, or oh, yeah. I haven't thought of that before. Or, oh, yeah, yeah. You see, and so, yeah, you have these feelings yeah. that pop up as well. They can yeah. influence your feelings. Yeah. So the feeling might be like, wow, like I feel better now that I've had a big cry about the bad things I've done. Yeah. The fact that I feel better, that's a good thing. Yeah. Maybe this is the secret to feeling better. <laughs> <laughs> you know, having a cry about the bad things you've done. You know what I mean? And yeah. they can, or, they can or assist I that see, feeling. I see that happening more naturally for myself. I have a big cry about things and then I do feel better. But then they can give me an additional feeling of like, yeah, you're on the right track there. Yeah, uh, Yes, a feeling that of confirmation. Confirmation, yeah. Um, they can give you these sensations in your physical body that cause you to feel like, wow, that's, a, that's something I took notice of. You know? Yep. They can, they can influence you to look at things, mm -hmm. to see things, to read things. They can influence you to listen to a person. They can influence the person to come into your life to influence you. Yeah. They, there's all sorts of things they can do. Yeah. And, thank you. and their their powers are, while limited, you know, compared to God's powers, are still fairly large. Mm. But they can only exercise them in harmony with your desire and will. Yeah. So if you don't have your will or desire engaged, then none of these powers can actually be exercised. Mm. Yeah, and that, that, thank you. That's what I was after, just mm. some concrete ideas because yeah. it's, quite, it's quite a lot. And if we're willing to actually sort of even have faith that that process can occur, we're much more noticing what I feel, yeah. what my interactions are. And we're more when responsive I feel better to or worse. external events too, mm -hmm. you know, that go, oh, that's interesting, you know, that uh, I, I need to look at that event and what's going on with that event and what did I learn from that event and so forth. Yeah. And these are ways that they can influence you the way, you know, to, to think differently. The, the reality is that if there were no external influences, the majority of people would, would rarely, if ever, change. Mm -hmm. 
But fortunately, God's provided quite a lot of external influences, of which our spirit friends who used to be people on earth are one, yep. uh, that can cause us to ponder and change. Okay, so let's move on to that. Mm -hmm. Other than faith and prayer, what are the other instruments that God has that... Well, faith and prayer are not in instruments of God. No, faith and sorry. Faith are I'm, instruments of the human. I'm cobbling two questions you together are. there on yeah. the fly. <laughs> um, let's be more specific. Let's be more specific. What are some of the other instruments that you haven't mentioned in this message yep. of God yep. that can assist in the preparation of our soul to receive God's love. Yeah, well, one obvious one for the majority of people now that they've heard about God's laws is God's laws. Yep. God's laws have a tremendous effect upon us because we see, particularly if we can see the consistency of them and the qualities of them, mm -hmm. we start to see, ah, oh, every time I do this particular thing, I have this particular result. Every time I feel this particular thing, I have this particular result. And we start seeing the consistency of the operation of God's laws. And that causes go to, to, to go, oh, maybe I should investigate or research uh, acting a different way here or feeling mm -hmm. a different way here and seeing what the result of that is. So that's like observation of cause and effect and how that can help us learn and grow. Correct. Every yeah. law has an effect when it's broken and mm -hmm. it has an effect when it's... If you are in this, harmony with in it. In harmony with it. And both of those effects can be measured. Yeah. And those effects can be measured at every level, the physical and emotional levels. Yeah. So if we're sensitive to that, then that means that God's laws can actually encourage us and do encourage us to not do certain things and encourage us to do certain things. For example, yeah. the physical laws of God, like gravity, encourage us not to jump off of buildings. <laughs> Notwithstanding any other, <laughs> you might be very, very sad and want to jump off a building, but the physical law that says basically if you jump off a too high building, you're going to die, that and it might, will hurt. That might, and it will, or it will hurt, yeah. that might say, oh, yeah, because of that, I won't jump off the building, yeah. even though I feel like doing it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a corrective mechanism that you can see through the operation that's already trying to correct your thoughts mm. and say, so obviously, jumping off a building is not a good thing. Mm. Mm. Jumping off any height is not a good thing if I'm going to die from it. Yeah. And and so this causes you to ponder your choices and decisions. So that mm. is having an influence on you. Yes. Mm. And lots of other different aspects of the workings of the law, as in our attractions, compensatory pain. And when we start to understand all the desire, laws, how, yes. Now we know, oh, there's a law of compensation, so that's going to have an effect on me. And there's a law of cause and effect, and that will have an effect on me. And there's a law of attraction, and that will have an effect on me. And there's a law of hierarchy, and that's going to have an effect on me, and so forth and so but, forth. But all of those things I see, yes, great, when we learn about it, we start to understand it. But no, I'm sorry, when I'm eight, those things are operating. I might not have an intellectual knowledge of it. But, but we still respond to them emotionally. That's what I'm saying. I'm learnt, God's created it, so I don't have to go to assistance group number three in the education and love series yeah. to actually know yeah. I can totally just learn through experience of engaging and feeling engaging the life, laws. Engaging of, desire, yes. feeling the law. You've got to be responsive to the feedback mechanism. Yeah. A child is often more responsive than the adult. So, you know. But, but the way, is it correct to say that the way that God's designed it is that over time even when we want to be blindly in rebellion towards the workings of the law it is going to be harder and harder to ignore yes yeah. yeah and you know people particularly notice that with love-based issues yeah you know where you know they might engage one or two or three abusive relationships by the time they've hit the third abusive relationship pretty unlikely for them to mm. engage a fourth mm -hmm. You know, unfortunately for most people, they respond the opposite way yeah. by trying to get control of the person. Yeah. And then they've got to correct that particular issue. But that happens over, you know, different processes that occur in the next relationship. Yeah. So frequently we don't understand the goals. Mm -hmm. And as a result, our progress is quite slow. And if we understood the goals, the process would be much faster. Yeah. But it's still, we still do progress. Yep because the way the, the external influences of God's laws have upon our soul and mm -hmm. our reasoning. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
So that's a great instrumentality God's provided, the law, yeah. God's laws, which are governed by God's principles. And, uh, and if you understand the principles, then you understand more of the laws and then you can work in harmony with that much better. Yeah. So that's one aspect. You could say the principles and laws of God govern, you know, and influence our soul and influence our choices and decisions and influence even our mind and so forth. Mm-hmm. Another is uh, things like, um, you know, there's, well, you know, there's so many influences, it's hard to... Well, let's Isn't hear them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, which but, one would you like to hear next? <laughs> like, well, I'm. We, I'm we, we're obviously not. This is not the time to talk about all of them. Yeah. Um, so. So maybe we shouldn't. Because maybe we should just mention a few. I think that the other, the next one on my list was the workings of the conscience. But I think perhaps you and I need to have a whole on camera discussion about the conscience. About the conscience, because yeah, it's not so something we've covered in previous teaching. Not much, no. Specifically. So you know, there's a lot of things we want to cover that yeah. we haven't had time to yeah. cover at this stage because we yeah. haven't yet really dealt with the essentials well. Yeah. So so, but but yeah, let's just briefly mention the conscience. Yeah. The conscience is an inbuilt mechanism that God built into our soul that allows God's mind to talk with our mind Mm. and therefore inform us when we take an action or a decision that's out of harmony Mm. with what God feels is correct. And even though it's a connection with our mind, it's an emotional... uh, It's our soul's mind. Yes, so it's... that's Thank you for clarifying. So it's our soul's mind through which our physical spirit body's brain is connected Mm -hmm. and our physical body's brain is connected. So obviously... They, uh, the, it can uh, it can cause thoughts to pop into our brain and and emotions to sort of arise. Well, usually they are the result of the thoughts that have now popped into our brain. Gotcha. Remember, these thoughts have come from God. Yep. To through this connection. Yep. And they tell us, "Oh, you're doing the wrong thing there." Mm-hmm. Whereas we might not have thought that we were doing the wrong thing before that thought popped into our yes. mind. But afterwards, we think, "Ah, oh, no, it's probably the wrong thing that I'm mm-hmm. doing there." Mm-hmm. So these are, and in the more sensitive you become to that, which is which is really God's way of sharing truth with you without you being emotionally connected. And uh, without you being open to love, you yeah, can still receive truth. You still truth. receive truth. So God created a mechanism by which you can receive truth, even if you are out of harmony with receiving love. Mm-hmm. And isn't that wonderful, you know, because otherwise you could only receive one or the other. And, and this mechanism is a very important mechanism to our development. Most people do not understand it at all, Mm -hmm. and neither do they understand its operation and why it operates the way it does, and where the source of the information is either. They don't even understand that. That's right. So, but and very often they can. There's a confusion about what is their conscience, what is truly their conscience, and And what what is is addictive addictions with spirits. There's a big confusion and avoidance of emotion and all these kinds of things. That's why we need a whole discussion. (laughs) Exactly. So there's large confusions there, but it is a mechanism by which God has created an instrumentality that God specifically created, in this case, in the soul itself, that allows Him to communicate truths if the soul is able to receive them. And that determine, is determined frequently by the soul's condition, but also mm-hmm. frequently is just to, determined by opportunity. Yeah. In other words, we start to take an action naturally. When we start to take an action, we become conscious of the action we're starting to take. Mm-hmm. And at that moment, if a thought can pop in our mind, hang on a sec, this action's not going to be very good uh, for you know other people or whatever, then, that, then our conscious is now bang, engaged. Yeah. And whether we listen to that or not, that's up to us, of course free will determines that we're able to listen or not listen, Mm -hmm. but at least the information has been given. Yeah. Yeah, So there's another instrumentality. Yeah. And I suppose we could go on about the instruments, but let's let's just leave it there. Um, Ironically, even even very dark spirits can be instruments that God can use to assist us to progress. Do you want to say any more about that? Well, you imagine if you if you take certain actions and so, and you get under the influence of specific spirits, and then you realise you're under the influence of those spirits, then and you trace it back to the cause of mm-hmm. how that influence began, to the action you took. Now you have the ability to link the influence of negative spirits with the action you took, thereby telling you that the action that you took was probably inadvisable. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, really, such things occur like with people who take marijuana, for example. Yeah. 
with people who take marijuana, frequently they become influenced by spirits. They p frequently become psychotic mm -hmm. and, and influence, you know, in, and it turns into schizophrenic type mm -hmm. episodes. There's a cause and reflect relationship. You take the marijuana, it's triggering some episode of schizophrenic action in psychosis, in psychosis, so-called psychosis. It's really not what people would think, but mm -hmm. so-called psychosis as defined by the medical profession. And, and now I've got a cause and effect relationship. I took, I took uh, a drug, it caused, or it had some kind of influence in psychosis. How did that happen? There's some cause and effect now relationship between a cause and effect. Mm -hmm. Now the spirits are now influencing the person negatively. They go through a course of treatment, which detunes the person generally from the spirit influence they're mm -hmm. under. If the person could trace it back to the source of the problem, and their underlying emotional reasons why they chose to take the drug in the first place, now they can actually cure yep. the problem, um, which often humankind don't do, of course, but mm. we could. So there's an e example of a negative spirit influence causing an action that is de definitely showing that that's inadvisable. Yep. And then we can trace it back to its cause and say, well, obviously that action is also inadvisable. Mm. It seems to me that the God's laws, the operation of God's laws, because really there you're talking about the laws of rapport as well and mm -hmm. cause and effect. All It's really like God's instruments, if we boil it right, right down, pretty much most of the time it's the working of God's laws. That well, if I, you boil it right down, anything God has created is an instrument. An instrument. <laughs> yeah, nature is an instrument. Nature is an instrument. Yeah. A person could be just looking at a view yeah. and it touches their heart and bang, now you know it's motivated their desire to do something mm -hmm. different. The average person on the planet could see a whole heap of pollution mm -hmm. and, and go, wow, I've got to change my life mm -hmm. just from seeing that. Another yeah. person could see, you know, a whole heap of cattle getting slaughtered and go, wow, I've got to change my life just yeah. because of that. So, so any creation of God mm -hmm. can actually become an instrument right down even to a virus or, a, you know, some kind of bacteria can become an instrument yeah. in the sense that it causes to wonder, why did I get this particular problem or what, yeah. you know, what is it doing to me? Why is it doing this to me? Why, did, why didn't it do that to me before? But now it is. Yeah. There's got to be a reason. There's a cause and effect for everything in the universe. That's a yeah. scientific fact, right? So let's see what the causes are mm -hmm. and trace it back. So you could pretty much say, and this is why I say it's a never ending list. <laughs> yeah. You could pretty much say that everything God has created can be an instrument of God to help your soul motive change so that you are open to receiving God's love. However, some influences are more powerful than others. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah, obviously. But basically you're saying that all of those instrumentalities, they're all operating, they're all working in order to have us develop us ultimately to have a sincere longing for God. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that Pretty beautiful? Cool. Yeah. God, God hasn't left us alone as, as, mm. as people would tell you. Yeah. And even most religious uh, religions believe God's sort of almost left us alone and confused. And that's not true at all. Mm. You know, God's left us with li quite large amounts of information. It's just our openness to seeing it yeah. that, that is affected, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Beautiful. <clears throat> okay. Do you want to read the next part? And yes. I say, I say next, as I said, when on earth, there is no other way to get into the sheepfold, but through the gateway provided. He that attempts to climb over the fence is a thief and a robber. But this should be modified to fit the exact fact, for there is no possibility of getting into this fold by climbing the fence. <laughs> there is only one way, and that through the gate of prayer and sincere longing. Yeah, mm. yeah, beautiful, hey? Mm. So there you're actually referencing the Bible. Well, I, I'm not you... referencing the Bible, I'm <laughs> referencing my own words, which are but fortunately contained in the Bible, in, the Bible. <laughs> in some ways. Paget would have been quite familiar with, of the, course, of with course. the Bible verse that you're referring to. Would you like to read it or I can read oh, it? No, you can read yeah. it. Mm. So this is John 10, 1. Yeah. I tell you the mm. truth. The man who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate but climbs in by some other way is a, is a thief and a robber. <laughs> yeah. The man who enters by the gate is the shepherd of his sheep. Yeah. So, so there you well, there, what were you really saying? Well, you know, what I was really saying is that there is only one way to receive God's love and, and any other way, any attempt of any other way is not going to work. Yeah. 
and and that's really what I was saying using the illustration and often oh, I've used many illustrations actually in the first century yeah. some of which some of which were recorded others yeah. of which uh, I've used recently that weren't recorded and I said them in the first century as well but yeah the the reality is obviously a lot of what I said didn't get uh, recorded properly but uh, in this instance I did say those words mm -hmm. um, because I was constantly you know, most for the people I was talking to in di at different times did have sheep and goats <laughs> and, <laughs> and areas yeah. where they'd bring in their sheep and goats at night to protect them from the winter, in particular, mm -hmm. from the winter snows and so forth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you're saying there, aren't you, that there's no other way through the gate. And, and in Matthew let me see, 7... You talk about the narrow gate that leads to... Yeah, well, there I was referring to a different thing. I, in okay. this one, I was referring to a sheepfold, if yes. you like. In the other one, I was referring to a, the gate that leads to life and the gate that leads to destruction. Yeah. And there, and broad and narrow are the gates and roads that lead to life and destruction. Yeah. And which is a different illustration I gave, and the two things don't refer to the same gate. <laughs> okay, yeah, it's not the same gate. So let's not let's not mix let's not our muddy the metaphors. There. <laughs> yeah, but let's just say then you're talking about the sheepfold. What does the sheepfold represent in this case? Um, the, what I was trying to illustrate was the sheepfold, where the peace, persons who listen to God's voice, um, and I was the shepherd of those sheep. Is the way that I sort of stated it to the people who listened to me in the first century mm -hmm. in the sense that i was the first one who could and back then we used to lead our sheep so mm -hmm. you know so if you had sheep instead of pushing the sheep with a dog like yeah, many yeah, people yeah. do nowadays you would be in front of the sheep leading the sheep you you first entered a place and then the sheep entered it because they followed you they like following they sheep. saw you as the source of their food and their mm -hmm. protection and so they followed you and that was a learned behavior obviously and so um, I was sort of, sort of, sort of uh, the way I viewed it was there's this protected air, area, if you like, that God's bringing the human soul, the, 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 the area of the celestial heavens, if you want to refer to them as that now, but, or the area of God, you know, I used to call it God's kingdom, you mm -hmm. know. And, and that, that area, if you like, is an area of special protection of place, but for the sheep, not for the goats. <laughs> goats are people who resist. Well, that's another part um, of the Bible where you talk about sheep and goats as well. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I used to refer to the goats as being people who resist truth. And, you know, goats, uh, it was known in the first century that goats were a bit harder to manage than sheep because they wouldn't follow you wherever you went generally. <laughs> and, and it was very hard to train them to follow wherever you went. And, goats uh, really got picked up on that whole self-reliance injury in humanity. Didn't <laughs> yeah, they? that's right. <laughs> and they also were quite destructive. Yeah. Uh, you know, sheep used to eat certain things, but goats used to eat everything, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so forth. And most of people then knew knew that. And so I could often refer to you know the characteristic of these two animals, yeah, um, as a way of referring to the characteristics of people who are in the right condition to receive God's love. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. So, but basically we're boiling it down. The, the way into the sheepfold, the sheepfold in this case is the, the celestial heavens where we've received God's love. The only way to do it is through this gate of prayer and sincere longing. Yes. And we've already established that we need to do some work in order to get sincere and to actually pray. And that's where God's the work love. is. We can't actually force the love to come in. That's impossible. Give up that. And we can't yeah. actually climb over the fence. No, you we can't. We can't cheat, get around. You can't it. cheat your way into it. Yeah. You can't. If call, you can't cause God to believe that you know you qualify when you don't. Yes. <laughs> so you can't climb the fence. Um, if if you could, even if your attempt, it makes you a thief and a robber. So it makes you someone who's trying to break the law. You you're trying to be yeah. a, a, a Which lawless is why I person. Use that analogy. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, but it's true, isn't it, that many people on earth yeah. attempt to jump the fence or climb over well, it, don't they, well, by I think just be, avoiding God's laws? Yeah, I think it'd be more accurate to say they believe they can. D the, don't you think they try to? Well, no, they believe they can, but it doesn't work. 
<laughs> it doesn't work. But uh, but is it correct to say that they're trying to the their desire is engaged in doing that, or is that? Well, they're trying to, but yeah. but it doesn't achieve. Like they often believe they achieve the result, mm -hmm. but it doesn't achieve the result. Mm -hmm. So where is the result coming from? It's got to be coming from interactions with other people, spirits, who cause them to believe they've had a success mm -hmm. than it is from God. Mm -hmm. And this is what I notice happening quite a lot is that people only finish up fooling themselves when they do this. So what, what I'm suggesting is if you attempt to, to receive God's love, but you've got a huge amount of addictions, there's no sincerity, you still want to retain your false beliefs about love, you think you can demand it and so forth. Mm -hmm. The only people you're going to attract in that condition is spirits who are willing to help you, or support you in these beliefs. Yeah. And many people on earth do believe those spirits are gods or, yeah. or you know, God giving them feelings mm -hmm. or God giving them thoughts. Mm -hmm. Not true, mm -hmm. but because we want to uh, believe it, we will accept it as truth and do whatever we want to do as a result of it. Yeah. And, and but it's a but it's a self delusional state. Yeah, we're not actually in the fold. Mm. It's a self delusional state. We believe we're somewhere we're not. Mm -hmm. And this is where I notice a lot of uh, Christian and New Age philosophies, and even what is Muslim philosophies and so forth, are headed where you sort of believe you're in a great condition because you're righteous and you're moral and you're this, and you're ethical and all these things. But as we learn in this message, ethics, morality. That's got nothing to do with receiving mm. God's love. Mm. When I say nothing, it's not it's not nothing to do because it can well, prepare actually, the soul. We need to. That's that's but, one of the major points, you, isn't it? Yeah, that it you is can important. be in an ethical and moral state and not receive any love at all. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, you know that that's the thing is that you know we need to start seeing the truth, and that is very frequently when people on Earth believe they're connected to God, no such thing is occurring. Yeah, and they're just connecting to spirits who are feeding their addictions and feeding their belief systems. That's all they're doing. Mm -hmm. And it's very, very damaging to humanity yeah. to believe that, you know, just because you're a member of a certain faith, like Christian faith or Muslim faith or any faith for that matter, and or just because you, you know, you have a certain belief system that you're now connected with God, nothing is more further than the truth. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So you've made a strong point there about the fact that many people actually are attempting to jump the fence and they're telling themselves that they're connecting to God or that they're in a great condition. Mm -hmm. But I know for myself, I confront emotions, as you know, um, where I'm not kidding myself that I'm in the fold. <laughs> But there's certain issues within myself where I feel like doing things God's way um, and longing for love or, you know, even bringing myself into a condition around truth and desire for certain things, like we talked about forgiveness yesterday privately and things like that, where I encounter my own sort of stubbornness or my own self-reliance or rebelliousness. Yep. And in that case, I... I need to be aware of that and work, I mean, I'm working through that emotionally. But there's a lot of ways that we can try and jump the fence, isn't there? Yeah, I don't know if the examples you've given are the right, are the good examples about jumping the fence. But Could you clarify? I'm well, not because I'm because really I feel what you're doing or what you're attempting to do is prepare your soul. You yeah. know that you're not receiving the love. You know you're not connected to God because of specific emotional well, injuries. Well, I know I don't want to do it God's way. And you know that, you know, the reason <laughs> why is because you're afraid of love and because of certain childhood events and other things that have happened and first and century more. events that you remember that you've not felt about and so forth. Yeah. And so that, you know that is happening. Now, to me, that's not a person trying to jump the fence. That's a person who knows that mm. there are specific issues associated with the preparation of their soul that they need to fix. Yes. Which is what we discussed a few paragraphs back where we talked about the preparation of the soul. Yeah. To me, the people who are sort of attempting to jump the fence are the people who do not believe that any preparation of the soul is necessary. Mm, okay, good. And they do not believe that there are changes that they are going to have to make. And they do not believe that they have problems of definitions of love within themselves. Mm -hmm. And they do not believe they are insincere. And they yeah. do not believe they have a facade. 
and yeah. they do not they do think that they've got a desire when they've got a demand yeah now these kind of people are more difficult to convince because because they have a concept inside themselves they're already doing what is required so they so any feeling they're feeling must be from god mm -hmm. they automatically assume it must be from god because they're already doing what they believe they need to do yeah without preparing the soul yeah and these are people who are very self-delusional and are also trying to as we've said here jump the fence in other mm -hmm. words they're trying to get into the sheepfold the celestial heavens without actually seeing that there's some very basic things that they're neglecting they're, they're not willing to do the work to prepare their soul basically yes. they and they're don't the people many times who, they don't even believe the soul needs to be prepared yeah they're the people who come to our talks and sort of go well what's wrong with god i'm here ready and asking and and, and not only what's wrong with god oh i've already received god's love when yeah. they haven't yeah and their life is demonstrating they haven't because they're making no changes but they still convince themselves i've already received god's love yeah. and why do they want to convince themselves because they already believe they're doing mm -hmm. what is necessary mm -hmm. to receive god's love and they already believe they can cheat their way into it yeah that they don't have to be sincere or they don't have to have change their ways of love that they believe in and they don't have to get rid of their addictions and they don't have to have a sincere desire and they don't have to they they believe in fact that god will just feed every one of their injuries and god is god is going to give them whatever they want whenever they want just because they want it yeah and they willing to believe that god will do it to the to the detriment of others mm -hmm. none of these things are true mm -hmm but they're willing to believe them. Yeah. And so then they become self-delusional. Yeah. But that's not preparing the soul. Yeah. Preparing the soul needs sincerity, needs its aspects of love addressed sincerely. Mm -hmm. It needs the aspect of desire addressed sincerely. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad I raised the example because basically you're saying even my knowledge that, look, I want to jump. I, I don't want to do it your way. I'm hurting because I don't want to. I'm aware of that. Mm -hmm. I'm aware of the issue. And you're aware of the limitations of it. I'm aware it's not going to end well. No. I know it's never going to work out. Yeah, which is great. So all of that, you, you, yeah, it is. This is a part you, of preparing That's me preparing my soul. Yeah. So that's distinct from me just blithely going, I'm all good. Like, well. I Why isn't this working anything. out? Yeah, uh, or even like it is working out, but it's a whole heap of spirit addictions yes. that well, I'm engaged I, I'm in. I'm in a fantastic condition. I love, you know, yeah. I love everybody. I <laughs> love you. I often meet <laughs> these people. I've oh, yeah. forgiven you when you know there's all this seething rage yeah. coming at you at the same time, or yeah. condescension yeah. coming at you. No, you haven't forgiven me. You wouldn't yeah. even be condescending if you yeah. forgive me. Yeah. And things like that, you know, it's like there's there's often proof. Yeah, that their condition is self delusional. Yeah, yeah. but seemingly not to themselves <laughs> <laughs> and, and which is a real self-delusion yeah that is a self-delusion isn't it mm. but i i'm glad that we're talking about this because i know last week when we talked about the closing of the celestial heavens mm -hmm. some of our people viewing here were you know quite challenged about well gosh i haven't received god's love that means everything is all bad and you know i had some discussions with the people involved like hey like you're doing stuff. Yeah, they're, they're involved in the preparation of the soul yeah. to receive. Yeah. And uh, the preparation of the soul is the hardest effort. That's mm -hmm. where it's very, very difficult because you've got to get from a state of a lack of awareness to a state of awareness on a number of issues, particularly when it comes to love yeah. and sincerity, yeah. truth and yeah. humility. You've got to get into a state of awareness. And, and without this state of awareness, you haven't prepared your soul to yeah. receive love. And, and the, you know, the most people tend to avoid that entire yeah. process because they want it to be easy, yeah, or easier, yeah. And it is quite simple, really. It's a, in fact, it's a lot easier to just get into a state of awareness on like two or three issues than have to progress towards the perfect natural man, which is getting into a state of mm. awareness on every issue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Do> you <know laughs> or I mean? on your own back. On your own back, without yeah. any assistance, really, yeah. aside from assistance. Well, obviously, God's still using the instruments that God's using. Yeah. But I mean, without any direct love-based love yeah. coming from God to do it. You know, it's yeah. very hard. Yeah, and, and it's, I'll just quote you back to you <laughs> something that we talked about just over the weekend where i was feeling a bit um 
downhearted and I was sort of saying to you, like, I just feel like I've got all this damage in me and I just feel like it's going to uh, just take me the rest of my life to get rid of this damage before I even engage in a relationship with God. You know, I just feel so overwhelmed. And you said, yeah, but like having a relationship with God <laughs> that's going to be easy that once you have the desire and this probably leads me to my final point on this paragraph which is like once you have the sincere longing and desire it's going to be way easy to have a relationship with god than it's been to, for you to have a relationship with all these people who damaged you all your life and the damage you're trying to let go of exactly once you let go of enough damage it's going to be a breeze having a relationship with god because yes. there won't be those same damaging influences it won't feel like a hardship and all of those None of the, things. you know there's no potential of god treating you badly yeah whereas you know with people you, you can love people but there is even after you love them there is still a potential of them treating you badly yeah. Yeah. they have their own will and their own desires and their own addictions they can still treat you badly yeah whereas with god and that applies to anyone including your married part marriage mm. partner or you know some people that are very close to your family or whatever that includes them yeah the reality is with God, you know, once you've worked through what's stopping you from having a relationship, which is the hardest part, and mm. um, after that, the relationship can get a lot easier because because you, at least with God, you, you know, there's no potential of damage. There's no potential of hurt. There's no potential that God's not going to act in your interests as long as your interests are also in harmony with the interests of the rest of humanity. Yeah. And, you know, God's going to act in your interests under those circumstances. And there's no potential of you being harmed by God, mm. you know. God's laws, of course, will correct you if you decide to do the wrong thing. But even that's wonderful because mm -hmm. then you know, oh, I'm getting some correction. Mm -hmm. But even the correction is not punitive. It's loving. So, you know, it's corrective. It's, a, mm -hmm. it's an attempt to correct you. So, you know, yeah, once you, once you get rid of the blockages, mm -hmm. which is a hard road, unfortunately, made harder by the condition that we have on earth, and um, once that happens, uh, is having the relationship with God is the easy part. Yeah. It's having the relationship with humans afterwards <laughs> that is the hard part. Yes. Because uh, many of them will treat you badly. Many of them will oppose you. Many of them will abuse you. Many of them will condescend to you. Many of them want to kill you. Mm. But that's not, none of that is because of it being difficult with God. Yeah. It's just because it's, people are difficult because they <laughs> resist love. Yes. That's yes. all it is. Yes, and that's what you're pointing out to me, that the the effort that I'm having to put into just developing sincerity, there won't be that same effort in establishing and growing and maintaining my relationship with God. Mm. It's not an effortful uh, relationship. Where the pain is is when you get attacked and abused and you get ridiculed and you've mm. got spirits attacking you all the time. And all of these things, of course, in time can change. But here on earth, um, you know, you can't prevent those things unless you change your condition. Yeah. And uh, and even if you change your condition, you still can't prevent someone killing you if they desire to. Mm. So at the end of the day, um, you know, it's only made difficult by our environment. So we need to stop blaming God for what people make difficult. Yeah. And we need to start putting the responsibility on the people who make it difficult yeah. rather than on God who is trying to make it easy. Yes. Yeah. And and also come to see that the major part of what we need to do is to prepare our soul. Yes, yeah. yes. And I think probably that's a good spot to, to stop for today, isn't it? Because we've still got another half of the message to cover, haven't we? Do, well, yes, to. although some of it is sort of, well, there's a whole lot of things oh, we no, need to. Actually, there's, there's a, a lot. There's quite a lot to discuss next. Yeah. So let's leave it there. I think that's probably a good place to leave it for today, yeah. for just people to ponder about that fact that that God's intentions towards us are beautiful and loving, yeah. and the only difficulty in reality of having a relationship with God is got nothing actually nothing to do with God. Mm -hmm. The difficulty in having a relationship with God has everything to do with the pressure that people put on you after you choose to have a relationship with God. <laughs> and by people, I mean not only the people who are living on earth, but also people that surround the earth who are no longer in the physical body, but in the spirit body. 
And, and those people place a lot of pressure generally on people who want to have a relationship with God, particularly when they can see that they can influence you in certain ways with certain mm -hmm. addictions and so forth. And, and the reality is if those, those people, you know, weren't placing this pressure on you, having a relationship with God would be a very, very different experience mm. than what it is for many people on earth today. And again, from my personal experience, though, is that me having this sort of aspiration to develop this relationship with God to prepare my soul mm -hmm. means that I encounter quite a lot of attack and resistance. Yes. But it seems to me that once I establish that connection with God, then I will still likely encounter a lot of attack and, exist and resistance, but I will feel better. Well, you don't pay, take the attack and resistance personally anymore. And that's what I notice about the difference between you and I, because there's so many holes in me about where I, you know, I question myself, I'm prone to guilt and worry and yep. all these things. Um, attack has a lot more Impact. effect on me mm. um i see it as i still and it causes tend you even to, to modify desire it, i suppress desire which is in, a very important part of as we've seen in the message our growth yeah so yeah in, a, in an attempt even to just mitigate the level of attack that i'm under i, yeah. I try to alter myself yeah whereas and it's something i'm working through is feeling that no someone attacking me is something that is under their control no matter how I am and also uh, it's it indicates a problem in them not in me correct and these are very important lessons and I feel it, even as I'm learning them I've become more confident and more yeah. uh, healthy in my viewpoint of what is truthful and not yeah. and then that's also part of preparing my soul isn't it yes yeah. and not only that it, you can see that these things that you're working through are matters regarding love. Yes. Remember we said there's those three primary areas. There's the, our beliefs about love. And one of the beliefs about love that you've obviously had as a result of attack has been, oh, if I'm open-hearted and I, and I love, then sooner or later I'm going to get attacked and it's going to really hurt. So mm. I'm going to close down my heart, not love. And many people have chosen that path. But this is one of the errors Mm -hmm. that God is trying to correct to, to help prepare our soul to get into a state where we want love again. Yeah. Many of us don't want love anymore, which is a sad thing, really, yes. that we don't want love anymore. But through past experience, we, we have a tendency to not want love anymore. And then as a result of not wanting love anymore because we've been hurt so much, we shut down the desire for love mm -hmm. as well. So, so, so these are aspects of the preparation of our soul that need to be yeah. addressed. And... And God sees every progress we make to prepare our soul as an important stage in our eventually receiving love from God. Mm. Mm. Yeah. It's not only um, the desire for love. There's also the desire to love. Like I have some injuries mm. and some errors about what I believe it means to love. Yep which caused me to not want to forgive in certain circumstances. Yeah, maybe we can give an example yeah. where you've been taught to sacrifice yourself every time you love. So now yeah. after years and years and years and years of being taught to sacrifice yourself, every new relationship is just going to turn into a sacrifice. So instead of seeing it as a joyful experience where mm -hmm. you now have a new friend and it's great, you know, yeah. you now see it, oh, there's another thing I have to do for another person, you know, yes. and, and that, of course, have that. And that, of course, <laughs> is going to have an effect on how much you desire to be loved and how much you desire to, to love. To love. And also to, to, I have the, if, that many people have this false belief that if I forgive, if you've harmed me and I forgive you, then, then you're going to, that's going to mean I'm soft on you coming back and doing and it again. harming you again, yeah. And I'll just let it happen. And, yeah. and so, so they have I this don't concept want to of forgiveness forgive. that's distorted. Exactly. It's, like, it's best to not forgive because you've got to yeah. get real hard on the people that have yeah. hurt you. Cut them off really so they can't. you got to into yeah. them that yeah. they've been wrong and you got to get her into them yeah. and you've got to make them suffer. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's how you get to, across them and they've done the wrong thing to you. Well, And they'll never yeah. realise if, if I'm just all nice and kind, they'll never realise what they did. And all these... And not understanding so that this issues. lack of forgiveness now joins you with the person that now joins yes. you in this codependent addiction of attack versus... It does the opposite of what you actually yeah. want it to do. Exactly. So, yeah. 
Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of ways in which we have distortions of love mm -hmm. that have impacted upon our preparedness of our soul to receive God's love. So yeah. we, we have a tendency then to go, well, God's going to do that the same as what people did that, Yeah, which, which in itself is not that logical because God, obviously God must exceed the best of any hu humans. But, oh. but unfortunately, we're not that logical in that place because we've got all this hurt inside yeah. and it's the hurt that governs our choices now. Yeah. And you can see why we've focused a lot of people's attention on trying to give up the hurt yeah. because, uh, because it does modify your decisions and choices mm -hmm. if you don't sincerely give up the hurt. And, and coming back to the to the main focus of your message today, we have to not get caught in the hurt and use it as an excuse. We must be willing to do the work to prepare the soul, which means like being willing even to shift our, be willing to change what we believe is true. It's our beliefs when that are we're, at fault. When we're within the hurt. Yeah. We have to be willing to give that up yes. in order to experience something new, including to experience God's love. Yes. So part of the preparedness of the soul, you could think of it as changing our belief systems about love, changing our belief systems about what sincerity means and yeah. belief systems about the facade. Yes. And changing our belief systems about desire because yeah. most of us only have a desire for personal interest. Yeah. And we need to change belief systems about desire as well. Yeah. And you can think of the preparedness of the soul that we referred to in the middle of our discussion mm -hmm. as that, you know, yeah. changing our belief systems in such a way that in our heart we now feel differently mm. about these things. And now because in our heart we feel differently, we're now able to receive God's love. So yeah. now when we have a longing for it, Yes. A sincere aspiration to receive it, it will be received. Yeah. Yeah, and we can trust that that's the case. Yeah. Mm. Great discussion. Yeah, Thank it's a good you. Discussion. I, I've enjoyed it so much. I, I hope our viewers have, <laughs> but I have. So thank you yeah, so we'll much. Yeah, we'll see whether you guys out yeah. there. Hopefully you have. <laughs> We've not. still got the second part of this, so this will be called session one. Yes. And then there'll be a session two following that, which talks a lot more about, you know, the contrast of like good thoughts, deeds and other things like that about, you know, do those things get us God's love or not? Yes. And, yes. You know, you know, I feel this is a this is good to discuss too because, you know, many people do seem to believe that if they're more ethical, more moral and more self righteous, that, yeah. that means that they're gonna get God's love more. Yes. And that's not the case either. So we need to discuss this. We need to talk areas. about it and yeah. really draw this distinction between human love mm -hmm. even perfected human love yeah, and god's, god's love as a substance yeah. as as in power differential like yeah. there's a lot of differences isn't there yeah, yeah. and we need to talk different there's a difference between preparing the soul and actually receiving yeah as well yeah. so we need to discuss those matters yeah, yeah. yeah. thank thanks darling for right. your thanks, time. Baby. and thanks to everybody thank who's you been man. listening you guys uh, hopefully you've enjoyed our conversation today yeah. And uh, hopefully when we do our conversation following this, we'll probably be, it may be tomorrow or it may be next week, it might be a week away, yeah. and we'll uh, get to finalise this discussion of the Paget messages on this subject, and then we'll move to some other topics that we've prepared yeah. for you that are on similar veins, still trying to prepare you to move, uh, to, to actually re-examine the material from the assistance group in, in a different light and, and mm -hmm. try to apply that material in your day-to-day -day lives. Yes. And thank you to our, um, our team. We've had a team today helping us with all the technicals. Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Yeah. yeah. And we'll see you next time. Yeah. Thanks, guys.